I'm going to read you a little bit from my new book, Cherry Crush, um, which is the first in my Chocolate Box Girls series. It's all from the viewpoint of a girl called Cherry, whose life is about to change forever. She's been a kind of misfit, a girl who's been bullied a little bit at her old high school in Glasgow. And one particular girl, Kirsty McRae, has made her life a bit of a misery. But on Cherry's very last day at school in Glasgow, everything changes. The girl who's bullying her really pushes her one step too far, and this is what happens. There's a pain in my chest, the hot, bitter ache of shame. I search around for something to say, a clever quip, a comeback, nothing. I've used all of my dreams, my fantasies already, and Kirsty has labelled them as lies. Well, maybe they were even though a part of me believed them at the time. Your mum is probably just a waste of space like you, Kirsty says nastily. I push my chair back roughly and stand. My legs are wobbly and my hands shake as I pick up my plate. I should just take my dinner and walk away to a different table in the furthest corner of the dinner hall where Kirsty and her crew cannot hurt me. That's what I should do. Then again, perhaps it's time I showed Kirsty McRae exactly what I think of her. After all, I have nothing left to lose. I lift my plate of macaroni, cheese and chips and tip it over Kirsty McRae's head, watching the cheesy gloop drip down through her perfectly highlighted hair. Chips roll down her white shirt sleeves, leaving greasy trails and ketchup spatters her creamy skin like blood. Oh, my God, Saoirse says. And slowly at first, hesitantly, the whole entire dinner hall begins to clap and cheer. Do you have any particular ways of finding good storyline ideas? And if you do, which one have you come to find as your best? I think inspiration is probably everywhere because um, there are always things happening around you and always little ideas that will kind of come into your mind. But my very favourite way of developing one of those sparks of inspiration is by daydreaming. It's um, something I always used to get into loads of trouble for doing at school, especially because I used to do it in maths lessons, not such a good plan. For me, it's about inventing stories and, and developing characters. So daydreaming, I think, I would recommend to anybody. Um, it's, it's just a brilliant way to, to actually give a story wings. So. If a person was told they had to write like a best-selling book and you could only give them one tip, what would it be? I really wouldn't advise anybody to sit down and plan to write a bestseller because I think that's kind of almost a fail-safe way of, of heading for disaster. You can't do it by formula. It just mm. doesn't work like that. So write about what you care about, write about what matters to you, and okay. just fingers crossed. If you're lucky, who knows? And if you could be like another famous author for one day only and you write like they do, who would it be? There are people who I used to really adore, uh, writers of adventure stories like Laura Ingalls Wilder, who used to write about her childhood growing up in, in the west of America in the pioneer days. And I'd love to have been her, you know, and imagine all of the things that she was writing about, the things that fueled her stories. Um, and people like Arthur Ransom, who's not so, so widely read anymore either, um, who, who would write about adventures in the Lake District, sailing stories and, and amazing things like that. Um, I think I would probably pick some of the, the kind of older classic authors that I read when I was, when I was your age, maybe, um, mm -hmm. just because they're so different and because it would be fantastic to get an insight into the kind of things that, that really sparked their imaginations. Mm -hmm. And I've got a question from Mila, age 10. Um, Daisy Starr has some embarrassing moments, like when she hid her tights under her swimsuit. Are any of those like personal experiences? Um, I'm not going to admit anything to do with tights and swimsuits, <laughs> but I have to admit the Daisy Starr series is the most personal. Um, and in the very first book, Shine on Daisy Star, Daisy Star builds a boat to sail around the world. He wants to take the whole family on a trip around the world. And that's something my dad actually did. He tried building a boat in the backyard, just like Daisy Star. Um, except he was a bit better at it than, than Daisy Star was. So, yeah, there are real life kind of triggers for the, for the storyline in the Daisy Star books, but not the tights bit. OK, <laughs> promise. OK, thank you. Did you ever believe you could become so successful? Oh, that's a really tricky one, Danny. I always 
I always really wanted to be a writer. It, it was my dream since forever, I think, just about. But I never really factored success or, or fame or anything like that into the picture. That was never an issue. It was, it was just the idea of maybe being able to, to write books or stories for a living, or even not for a living, just to be able to do it. That would have been so cool. And as I was growing up, um, not everybody kind of went along with that. Not everybody thought that was going to be possible. So for me, the biggest, most exciting thing about my career is, is really being able to make that dream from childhood come true a little bit. And the success and the fact that kids all around the world read the books, that's kind of icing on the cake. It's, it's the extra bit that I never even dreamed of, which makes it seriously cool. What would you say your greatest success has been so far? Oh, greatest success. I think, I suppose, making a dream happen. Um, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't pick out one particular book and say that's the, the best book or that's the most successful book um, because to me success isn't really about, you know, about the numbers that a book sells or, or anything like that. Um, but I think the fact that I can actually make a living from daydreams, that's got to be pretty cool. And also... I guess these days we're, we're kind of living in a technological age and, and I'm lucky I have a really good interactive website and I get feedback from my readers, um, letters, emails, all sorts of feedback like that. And it's the most amazing thing when you, when you open an email or a letter and somebody says, oh, I feel like I was in the story or else they thank you for writing about something that has special meaning or importance to them. And I think that's really what the success is to me and that's what the most important thing that I've achieved is it's it's being able to connect with young people around the world and hopefully um, help them with their whole growing up journey too. Do you think you can step up to another level and become even better somehow? I don't know I think I think just being able to stay in this and and to keep doing the thing that I love so much is is the main thing for me. It's true to say I never really think about it in terms of success but you know there are always new opportunities and new ideas and new challenges out there. And there are so many things I would love to do. And I think as well, when you, when you are actually um, able to make your living from writing, it's, it's great to push yourself too and to try different things. And, and for example, the Chocolate Box Girls series, that, is, that was a challenge for me because I'd never tried to write a series before. So there are always things like that that are new that are gonna kind of push you a little bit further. It's not really for me to say, I guess, whether I can step up another level or anything. I'm just so glad to be doing what I do and hope that I get to carry on daydreaming for a living as long as possible. Jessica, AJ, I'd like to know who inspired you to start writing. The person who really got me going was my dad, I think, um, and he had nothing to do with writing. Um, he repaired cars for a living but, um, and built boats in the garden in his spare time, obviously. But um, he was a really huge inspiration to me because he was a person who, who dreamed big he always had big ideas, fantastic dreams, and he worked very, very hard to make them happen. And 99% of those dreams never got off the ground at all. Um, but I did, you know, that didn't really matter, and it didn't stop him trying. And he taught me that if you want a dream to happen, you have to put a lot of work into it. Don't just expect it to fall into your lap the next morning. It doesn't work like that. I've sent acres and acres of stories away to my favourite teen mag when I was a teenager, for example, um, and almost all of them came straight back with very polite letters saying, no, thank you. Um, but eventually one did get printed and published and paid for, and that was an amazing feeling. And I think I'd, I'd, you know, I'd thank my dad for really believing in me, I guess, and, and for making me think that dreams could actually come true if you tried hard enough to make them. Will you, at any point in time, write historical teen fiction? such as Jane Austen and Georgette Hare? I would probably say no, I won't write like Jane Austen or Georgette Hare, but historical, that's quite interesting because I have a really, really strong interest in history. Um, and although at the moment I don't see myself moving to actually write an historical novel as such, it's quite interesting because the book that I'm writing right at the moment, which, which is the follow-up to Cherry Crush, the second in the series, it's called Vanilla Sky, and it has quite a strong history theme running through it, um, a little bit of mystery and a little, almost a little bit of a ghost story running through it. Um, so it's almost like you're dealing with a story from the past mixed in with a story from the present, and that's brilliant. That's another of those challenges, if you like, you know, something, something different. If, if I remember the very first 
novel idea that I tried to write when I was maybe 17, 18 was actually an historical novel and, and I never actually got around to writing it, never got very far with it anyway. It's still something that I'd like to do one day. So you never know what might be around the corner. If you could compare yourself to one of your characters, who would it be and why? I suppose the easy way to answer that would be to compare myself to one of the adult characters in the story. Um, and there is a character in Driftwood called Miss Quinn, who's an art teacher. And at the start of Driftwood, the, uh, the story of Driftwood, the characters, the, the girl characters in the story um, rescue, rescue a, three kittens from the dustbins and actually bring the kittens to hide in the art teacher's stock cupboard. And that's based almost directly on something that happened to me when I was an art teacher in a high school. Um, when some children ran in, into the classroom early one morning before registration screaming that, was, that there was a dying pig on the school field. Luckily there wasn't, but there was a little Yorkshire Terrier kind of struggling a bit and we managed to rescue it, brought it in and um, hid it in the stock cupboard in just the same way. Um, probably if you wanted um, the name of, of you know, one of the teen characters in the stories, I'd, I'd be more like Jude, for example, who worried about um, what people thought of her in Sunday Girl or perhaps Hannah from Driftwood who's quite quiet and, and you know the quiet more thoughtful characters definitely not Scarlet but um, you, you know I think everybody has a bit of a rebel secretly hidden away inside them as well. When my mum was my age there was no such thing as teen fiction and today everyone reads them so do you think it's a rite of passage for all teen girls if yes why? I think it probably is now and I think you're so lucky that you have that rite of passage open to you because when I was that age there was there was nothing really in the way of teen fiction. You kind of jumped from, from adventure stories or fantasy stories directly to adult stories and I remember very, very strongly at the age of maybe, you know, 11, 12, 13, I wanted those books. I wanted there to be something that reflected my life at that point, I wanted there to be something that it kind of helped me to make sense of what it was like to be growing up, um, to be a little bit interested in boys but not kind of wanting too much to do with them and to kind of know how to make sense of the whole family growing up thing, the friendship thing, all of those challenges that, that growing up will throw at you. And there wasn't, there was nothing there. So it's, it's one of the triggers, one of the reasons why I want to write that kind of book and um, the kind of realistic growing up story that, that focuses on emotions and feelings and things like that. And this is a question from Zoe, age nine. Where do you write your books? Oh, okay. Um, my favorite place ever to write my books is, I've got a little blue writing shed in the garden at home. And it sounds a little bit dodgy to say I have to go to the shed to write my books, but it's, it's, it's a very pretty shed. It's got a little veranda and everything. Um, and it looks out across a field and sometimes, sometimes an owl will come and sit in the tree that's, that's um, just, just across on the slope and kind of stare at me as well. And especially, if I'm, especially if I'm wasting time and daydreaming too much, it'll kind of give me a very hard look and make me, make me get back to work. But the writing shed is my favorite place to write and one of the important reasons for that is because I have no internet and no telephone there. So there are no interruptions and no excuses to skive. Um, but in the winter, when it's too cold, I guess, to be in the writing shed very much, I'll, I've got a quiet little room at, you know, in the house that, that I'll work in and there'll be a roaring log fire on the go and you know, hot chocolates kind of to chain drink. So that works for me as well. And I work straight onto a laptop, so you kind of can, you can take your work with you. And occasionally I can work on trains and hotel, in hotel rooms, things like that, if I really have to. Thank you. Great, thank you.